Welcome to my backyard. It's a fall day. The rain's just starting to come. It's windy. But today for Mousetrap Monday, I'm going to show you the best way to trap moles. These are leaving mounds everywhere, digging. And that can be really frustrating when you have to mow the grass and hit all these piles of dirt. It doesn't look very good. So I'm going to show you the all-time favorite trap that I use to catch moles. Recently, I spoke with a professional mole trapper and he gave me some pro tips, some secrets on how to make his mole trap even better. So I'm gonna share those with you. Then at the end of the episode, I'm gonna see if the wild animals in my backyard will eat the moles that we catch. I've never heard of wild animals eating moles, so we'll see if they do like the mice and rats. So if you have a mole problem or you wanna learn the best way to catch moles, stay tuned. Here's my favorite mole trap. The style's known as a scissor trap. It has a powerful spring in the middle and two sets of jaws that can grab a mole coming from either direction. They open and close like this. It's really difficult with that spring. We can see why they call it a scissor. Now there's several companies that make this style of trap. This one's made by Victor and it's known as the out of sight. Victor has been selling out of sight for a long time. It was first patented by William Hooker on December 13th, 1898. So it's been sold for the past 121 years. Back in 1927, you could get a dozen of these in the hardware store for $16. They cost a little more than that nowadays, but any trap that's been around for over 100 years must be a good design. Now the out of sight mole trap wasn't the first trap invented by William Hooker. He also invented this, the out of sight mouse trap, the first snap style of its kind. This is a very rare original made by the Animal Trap Company. William Hooker first patented this mouse trap four years earlier in 1894. So clearly he knew how to make the best kinds of traps. Think of how fast technology becomes outdated. Anything that's used over a hundred years must be the best. Now with that powerful spring, these can be very difficult to set, but you need to use leverage. They come with these two setting bars. I'm going to show you how to set it out of the box and then how to make some modifications to make the trap even better. These modifications were shown to me by a professional who makes his living trapping moles. I already showed you the jaws in the spring. This also has a safety catch, a lever, and the trigger with a little hook on the end. The end of the lever fits in the hook. Make sure the lever is ready to flip over and the safety hook's ready to latch in. This is going to take two hands, but the spring's round and those fit the hooks right here. Put it on. I don't know many people that have the hand strength to set this without the setting tools. We'll pull this down and set the hook on the lower bar. Man, you gotta be careful. It's easier to do this when you're not trying to film it. We'll try that again. We'll flip up the safety latch. The idea is the mole will come down his tunnel, put his body in the jaws, and lift up that pan. That's a firm grip on our body. Ooh, that tore my filming screen. Shoot. Have to get a new one of those. Just be careful and keep your fingers away from this. So our first pro tip, our first modification, is a soup can lid with two slots cut in it. They slide on the pan. Then as the mole comes through and pushes up dirt, there's more surface area to set off the trap. Now I'm going to set this and show you the second pro tip. As you're latching in the lever, you want to place a little piece of plastic. This is from a shopping bag in between. That way it's not metal on metal, but much more slippery. But you got to be careful. That makes it a hair trigger. Now with the plastic on the trigger making it very sensitive and the soup can lid on the pan, we're much more likely to catch a mole going down its tunnel, pushing up dirt. I left a safety latch on that one. That way it didn't tear apart my filming studio. So let's use these pro tips to go catch the moles in my yard. I'm going to pull that dirt away. This is really fresh. It wasn't here two hours ago. I'm going to fill for a soft spot in the middle. Right here. I can see it's run. It's going side to side like this. I'm going to cut out a circle and set up our trap. It's 
This is pretty loose soil and the run goes straight across. We're gonna set our trap right in the middle. I'm gonna take that out and then cut a path for the jaws to close on. So there's a high spot in the middle and two paths for the jaws. We'll set that in there right at mole level. Now I'm just gonna sprinkle some dirt in here. Put some grass on either side. Make sure that's out of the way of the jaws. Now I gotta take off the safety latch. If you don't do that, you won't catch your mole. And just cover the top layer with very loose soil. This mole has been actively digging, so I'm gonna leave the camera on it, see if we can catch the mole, come down the tunnel, lift up the pan, and get caught in the jaws. Well, that didn't take long. It looks like our trap is sprung. We'll pull it out. There's our mole. Our mole trap with the modifications worked perfectly. The mole went in there, lifted up the pan. With that plastic on the trigger, it made it very sensitive. It released the spring and got caught. To remove it, we pull the jaws and give it a little flip. If I ever have a mole problem, this is my go-to setup. Moles are such a fascinating animal. Everything about them is designed for living underground. Powerful front legs and huge claws allow them to tunnel through the dirt and their head compared to their body size is really small. Their eyes and ears are so tiny you can't even see them, but they make up for it with sensitive whiskers and a very powerful nose. That allows them to find prey like worms, grubs, and underground insects. They have sharp teeth, they're basically carnivores. And because they're carnivores, I'm not sure wild animals in the backyard are gonna eat them. But there's one way to find out. Let's go set up the motion cameras and see if the wild animals enjoy a mole snack. Well, I've heard it before, but apparently the rumor's true. Wild animals do not like to eat moles. Two different skunks and an opossum came by. They smelled the mole and walked on. If that was a rat or mouse, they would have gobbled it down. Something about moles aren't appetizing to wild animals. Interesting, I wonder what it is. Okay, we'll start with the random food question. Sean, what's your favorite biscuit? Well, the answer is any biscuit my wife makes. But I picked this question because the answer also depends on where the viewer asking the question is from. If the viewer is from the UK, they mean something completely different than what we call a biscuit here in the US. I only learn this because in the evenings I edit videos. And while I'm doing that, my wife will sometimes watch a show. One of her favorites is a great British baking show. And I've learned from that show that a biscuit is what we call here in the US a cookie. So in America, what we call a biscuit, the UK might call a scone but what we call in the US a scone is something completely different. And what the UK calls a biscuit, we call a cookie. But in America, a cookie is a general term for a soft or hard cookie. In the UK, a cookie is a soft cookie. A biscuit is hard and crumbly. Okay, next question. Studio looks good. I will let others fine tune it for you. What kind of trail cameras are you using? Well, currently I'm down on trail cameras. I am so frustrated. I've been using the Browning Spec Ops Platinum cameras. They take really good high definition video, but they do have some glitches. For example, I get a comment a lot that they have a buzz, a high pitch frequency. People have really sensitive ears and the cameras have that buzz. But the most frustrating part about them is they only run for 20 seconds at night. Then they turn themselves off. 
That's to save battery life, but oftentimes they miss the footage that I need when I'm filming at night. To make up for it, I bought multiple cameras. I set up as many as five different cameras around a trap at different angles to try to get the footage. Well, last night I was filming a rat trap. I wanted to catch this rat in a bucket. And what happened is I set up all my cameras and when I went to go check it in the morning, the lock on the barn door was pried off with a crowbar. I was like, oh no. When I went inside, someone broke into the barn, found my trail cameras, took all the cameras, tripods, rechargeable batteries, and SD cards. In total, it was over $1,000 in filming equipment that they stole. I'm gonna have to buy some new cameras. I'm looking at different brands. If you know any trail camera that takes good high definition video and runs for longer than 20 seconds at night, I wanna know. Otherwise, I'm gonna be spending another $1,000 to replace the Browning trail cameras. Okay, that's it for question and answer time, but I'm gonna do one more show and tell. I just harvested this out of my garden. This is a giant sunflower. I've been growing these for over six years. This one I've been breeding is a mixture of the Mongolian giant and a mammoth sunflower. I like to eat these seeds, feed them to the birds, and feed them to my pet mice and rats. And you get a lot of food off of one plant. Plus the beans like to grow up the stalks. If you wanna learn more about the sunflowers I grow, I've posted a video on that. I'll put the link at the end of the video in the end card and in the description. Check it out. Now you have to harvest these right away, get the seeds out. Otherwise they tend to get moldy. The whole flower head gets moldy, but I love gardening and sunflowers are one of my favorite. Thank you so much for watching my videos. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please consider clicking the button right here. And if you wanna watch the best videos on how to catch what, Sterling? Mice, rats, squirrels, chipmunks, moles, voles, and gophers. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.